In the previous video, I showed how the wing bones articulate. We now proceed to articulating the ribs. This is a typical chicken rib. It has a capitulum that branches out from the rib on one end and a tuberculum. One side of a rib has a pronounced ridge running along almost the entire length of the rib. The other side has a smooth groove that runs from the region between the capitulum and the tuberculum till about halfway down the rib. The side with the ridge will face the outside of the body and the grooved side will face the interior of the rib cage. In the thoracic vertebrae, if you observe closely, there are tiny concavities, seven in number, one on each side of the thoracic vertebrae. These are the facets for articulation with the capitulum of the ribs. This is how a rib would articulate with the thoracic vertebrae. And these are the ribs arranged in the order by which they would articulate onto the thoracic vertebrae. The first two ribs do not have sternal ribs and are free hanging. These two ribs are easy to identify as they are relatively shorter and smaller. The seventh rib has a very short tuberculum. The third to the sixth thoracic ribs look quite similar, but observe closely and you can see that the crescent groove between the capitulum and the tuberculum becomes progressively shallower as you go from third towards the sixth rib. The sternal ribs are arranged in ascending order of length. The shortest comes first and the longest is last. However, the last two sternal ribs are more or less equal in length, but a closer inspection reveals that one end of the last rib that joins with the thoracic rib is flattened and rounded. Here's a close-up of the ribs. These are the four pairs of uncinate processes that would lie between the second to the sixth ribs. And here's a close-up of the uncinate processes. Begin articulating the ribs in the way that we have explained. Start with articulating the seven thoracic ribs. Once you're done with this, take the sternum and using a clamp or support, position the sternum below the thoracic ribs as shown in the image. Here's a close-up of the thoracic ribs and the sternum. On the sternum, there are four protrusions. These protrusions will connect with the first four sternal ribs. As you can see in this image, I've already glued the first sternal rib into the first protrusion. Position the sternum in such a way that one end of the first and the fourth sternal ribs are able to reach down to the first and the fourth protrusions respectively. Once you've correctly positioned the sternum, you can start gluing the sternal ribs. A finished rib cage will look like this. In some chickens, from what I've read, the last sternal rib touches the sternum. In the case of this skeleton, the fifth rib does not touch the sternum and is sort of free hanging.
This video will be followed by articulation of the coracoid and scapula. The link in the description below will take you to this next video. Thanks for watching.